What I'm about to share with you can literally change your life. If you're struggling with any kind of wrist, hand, elbow, forearm pain, numbness, or tingling from working with your hands, that isn't normal. And you can fix it. This has taken me years and years to discover. I've spent hundreds of thousands of my own dollars learning how to best fix these issues. And I'm here to help you. I guarantee it. Please just stick with me. I'm going to prove to you beyond literally a shadow of a doubt that you can solve the repetitive strain pain in your forearm or wrist, and it's much easier than you actually think it is. I want to show you how this has actually worked for other people. This is Tyler, who works as a vascular access nurse. He plays video games as well as the piano. Uh, we actually have a Discord chat where people can talk about and post their issues, and they've been seeing a ton of people just posting success stories there lately. Uh, I can send you the link to that after this. Anyhow, Tyler was put on FMLA leave at his job after having pain, numbness, and tingling in his hand. He couldn't grip the needle he needed to literally do his job. His wrist hurt so bad that he couldn't even tie his shoes, man. Like, it was terrible. He went to his doctor and a specialized hand therapist, and they weren't even able to help him. He said he was feeling hopeless after dealing with it for six weeks and getting put on leave from work, and he was scared about his future. So, as he says here, long story short, he got the wrist pain troubleshooter from a post we made on Reddit. And using our systems, he was gaming again in one week. And within two weeks, his nerve pain and numbness was mostly resolved. By week three, he could start reintroducing piano playing. And now at week four, he can do 50 pull-up workout and is cleared to go back to work again. Getting messages like this actually just makes me so happy that we're able to help people get their lives back. So this is Ben, also from the Discord. He was dealing with wrist pain and also found us on Reddit. Uh, after using this for three weeks, he reported he was on the road to improvement. He went from barely lifting an eight pound weight 15 times to getting into the low to mid 20s. He says he has less pain while gaming. After following the system for five weeks, he was able to throw out all the crazy braces and devices he was trying to use to fix his pain before. We have refined and developed these systems with our esports medicine work with professional gamers for the past coming on 10 years now. And we've tested these systems with them. Take Queasy for example. Queasy is a Serbian professional Fortnite player and has been considered one of the best Fortnite players of all time with over 26 first place tournament wins, over a million dollars earned, and a three-time world champion. So these guys spend all day, sometimes up to 12 hours a day, playing and practicing. Hundreds of actions per minute, clicking the mouse, moving their wrists, elbows, swinging the mouse, fast clicking on the keyboard. I mean, fast. It's actually crazy what these guys can do. Like so many other pro gamers we work with, he developed wrist pain from overuse. He was freaking out because this is his career we're talking about here. The dude has made over a million dollars doing this, so he was rightfully concerned. So he reached out to us back in 2022, and we were able to get him back to 100% in two weeks using our systems. And he went on to win even more championships after that. People generally don't think results like this are possible without injections, medication, surgery, or other crazy treatments. But none of these people had to get any of those things. I actually get wrist pain from doing hours of deep tissue myofascial massage as a physical therapist, and I use these exact same exercises to fix my pain when it pops up. And when I get on top of it quick, I can resolve it in about two days of exercise. It's really simple once you understand what is happening here. I, I just want to be really clear here that our systems have been life-changing for people, and not just gamers. These are all the messages we've gotten, guys. So here's the first one. At wrist issues for a year, it got so bad I couldn't play a single game without pain anymore. After two weeks, I can play without pain at all. What I'm sharing with you today has changed thousands of people's lives and saved countless hands from getting surgery. And these systems can work for you. I never thought I'd be sitting here talking about this to you today. I never thought I was gonna be the wrist pain guy. I was happy just working in pro esports here in Los Angeles. But after seeing the healthcare system fail so many people we were doing consults for, I had to figure out how to share the knowledge we gained from working with these high performance players with the masses. I actually started down my path in physical therapy with traditional sports. I got my undergraduate degree in sports medicine from the University of Central Florida, and I did a lot of work with football, baseball, basketball, etc. And I learned a ton. I used to be a competitive martial artist, and I was really interested in working in the stunt industry one day. I won a world championship in 2013, so I always had an interest in the performing arts, which led me to work for Disney World for a year after I graduated. And ultimately, I was hired by Marshall University as a grad assistant to develop a program for their performing arts students. So I was working with their dancers, theater performers, musicians, and marching band, and I actually did my thesis on shoulder tendon issues in violinists. But the major thing I noticed while working the clinic there was how many musicians were struggling with tendon pain from overuse. They were also concerned about their ergonomics and posture while playing their instruments, whether it be violin, piano, flute, saxophone, guitar, etc. The common thread was how little endurance they had in their wrist and hand muscles, and it was causing their forearms to be super tight, and they had pain radiating down into their wrist and hands, and sometimes numbness and tingling. It wasn't until after I graduated with my master's there, and I was working on my doctorate in physical therapy, that I noticed how similar gamers were to these musicians I had been working with. 
all at the same time, I noticed how big the Fortnite World Cup was, and I had attended a physical therapy conference recently where esports was being discussed as a possible population that could benefit from physical therapy. At that conference, some of the research done by my now colleague and business partner, Matthew Hu, was cited at the presentation, and I immediately knew I had to reach out to him. I saw he was streaming Fortnite on Twitch, and I hit him up, let him know who I was, what I had done, and my vision for helping gamers. He had already been working in esports since 2016, and I wanted to join him. He brought me on, and one thing led to another, and when I graduated my doctorate, I risked it all. Packed all my stuff up into a car and drove across the country to chase this crazy esports dream. It's been absolutely insane and I've had the chance to work with some of the biggest esports teams, gamers, and streamers in the industry. I've been involved with winning multiple championships across multiple esports titles, and I really feel like I've been able to help this community in a really special way. Along the way, we have been able to give back to the community, and we've done presentations on our systems for the American Physical Therapy Association, the National Athletic Trainers Association, TwitchCon, our work has been featured by esports orgs, the leagues, publications, and even more. But all that is just a bunch of vanity stuff. The real thing that drives me every day is trying to help people that are stuck in this broken healthcare system we find ourselves in. I got so tired of seeing it all the time whenever we did consults with gamers or other people that work with their hands outside of this industry. The stories were always so similar. People overused their hands doing something. They had pain, numbness, tingling, or whatever. They went to their doctor. Their doctor only spent a few minutes talking to them and just told them to rest, ice, brace, and it should go away. They do that and it doesn't help, of course. And it only comes back when they start doing their jobs or playing again. They go back to their doctor and the doctor recommends them injections and medications and eventually keep going down this path and getting pushed into surgery. And I'm not going to sit here and say surgery is never the right option or is not ever appropriate, but our healthcare system is highly incentivized to push people down that path. When you are holding a hammer, everything looks like a nail and these doctors don't understand the nuance of this issue and they get paid to do surgery. But the latest tendon research shows you can heal from this even if your nerves are being compressed at the carpal tunnel just by doing the right exercises in the right way. So they push people down the surgery route because it's the easiest fix from their point of view. But some of the people that are coming out of these surgeries are mangled from this. They have nerve pain and permanent scar tissue problems after these surgeries that can be prevented most of the time just by doing the right exercises for the weak tendons. Listen to what this guy had to say about his unnecessary surgery. What's up, Saito or Sitho? I'm not sure how to say your name, but uh, this scar is from surgery that I got um, that started with Osu as well as my rib. Um, I got both of those removed um, because I went down this pipeline of, is it RSI, is it carpal tunnel, literally everything possible I tested. And the answer is, it's literally just weak hand muscles from overuse, like tight hand muscles. And you should definitely speak with 1HP. I see some people linking them um, in replies to your tweet. But just like they say, the only thing you have to do is take is strengthen your hands. That is my biggest regret. Um, I have permanent nerve damage from this surgery that I didn't need because I was led to believe I had thoracic outlet syndrome because I thought I had carpal tunnel symptoms. It's a very slippery slope. And I just wanna make sure that you know, after I've been dealing with this for eight years, all you have to do is strengthen your hands. That is all you have to do. It, it has nothing to do with nerves. Your nerves are not affected um, by video games, almost never. So yeah, hope. Hope things get better for you, bro. So here's the thing with repetitive strain injuries. And for our purposes today here, we're talking about specifically the muscles that start at the elbow and run down through your wrist and into your hand. You have these muscles on the front part of your forearm, the back part of your forearm, the sides, and the thumb and the hand have their own muscles as well that are responsible for movement. So as the name suggests, repetitive strain injuries are caused by repetitive movements, whether that's aiming in an FPS game with a mouse, strumming a guitar, repetitive hook movements in crochet, welding, digital art, anything really that requires these repetitive movements. Every time you move your hands, you engage the muscles in your forearm, wrist, and hand. These muscles connect to your bones via tendons, which are like ropes. So these tendons don't contract, but rather they transfer the force from the muscles that do contract to the bones. Now, I want you to think about what you would feel like if you went out and ran a marathon tomorrow. You'd feel like shit, to be honest. Your legs would be in pain, they'd be on fire, they'd be super inflamed, it would, it would suck. But, you'd spend, but if you spent the next six months gradually training for that marathon, you would probably not be too uncomfortable after running it. The same thing is true for the small muscles in your forearms and hands. These muscles do smaller movements than move your legs to run, but they fatigue out just the same as if you did much more without properly preparing. Now, in general, humans weren't meant to do repetitive movements with their hands all day, every day, so naturally you won't just have the endurance to do things like code for eight hours a day. And when you try to do things like that, you create micro tears in your muscles and tendons, which leads to problems. We come from the gaming space, so we typically explain it like your muscles have a health bar or HP bar. It's where our name originated from, 1HP. But like in a video game where you lose health points every time you take damage, our muscles and their associated tendons have a certain amount of health points based on their endurance. Every time we use them to do movements, 
we deplete health points. We can restore this HP with rest, stretching, breaks, and other things, but what we really want to do is increase the size of that health bar. Kind of like a video game character leveling up and getting more health, we want to level up our muscles so they can handle more strain for longer. The first thing you may notice here is tightness in the muscles. They kind of feel like rocks, and the tendons get really tight, and a lot of people report things like clicking and popping, decreased coordination, and pain in this stage. A lot of people get confused because they go get an x-ray, an ultrasound, an MRI, whatever, and nothing really shows up, even though they have pain. That's because tight tendons aren't thick and swollen yet, so they don't show up as problematic on the MRI. These tight tendons can press on nerves because you have a lot of nerves that weave in and around these tendons and through muscles. One of the most common places people experience this is at the carpal tunnel, which, by the way, is one of the most misdiagnosed issues. Just because you have compression at the carpal tunnel doesn't mean that you have a thickened carpal tunnel ligament compressing the nerves, which is what they do the surgery on. They cut open that carpal tunnel ligament to relieve the pressure, but this only works if it's the ligament that's thickened from years of strain. And if you do have a significantly thickened carpal tunnel ligament, surgery can be a good option. But if you're going to go down that route, you better make sure that you have an MRI or an ultrasound test that shows one side is actually thicker than the other. So this is what it looks like on an MRI here. So you can see the carpal tunnel ligament there, the tendons, and you want to be able to see an observable difference in size of one of these carpal tunnel ligaments compared to the other hand to make the decision that this is actually the problem. Think about it kind of like this. Uh, it's sort of like a sandwich with the carpal tunnel ligament being one slice of bread, the nerve is in the center, and the tendons are on the other side being the other slice of bread. You can reduce the pressure on the nerves by just reducing the tension on one side of that equation. But even with a thicker carpal tunnel ligament, it's still worth doing the endurance exercises first to reduce the tightness of the tendons that can be contributing to your nerve pain. So it's literally always worth doing the exercises first because what do you have to lose really here? The worst case scenario is that they don't work and you need surgery anyway but so many times you can fix this problem without going down that route. Anyhow, when tendons get irritated, they tighten down and cause pain. And if they're compressing nerves, they cause numbness and tingling. On another note, nerve compression symptoms always present downstream from the nerve compression location. So that means if you have pain above your wrist, you don't have a nerve compression at the carpal tunnel. It's more likely coming from the muscles higher up in your arm, like at the cubital tunnel by the elbow. So tendons get tight when they are overused and have low endurance. And you might be out there like, well, I work out, I lift weights, I'm strong, I shouldn't be too weak to type on the computer. But again, to call back to the running analogy, you have two types of muscle fibers. Type 1, type 2 fibers. Endurance and strength fibers. Slow twitch, fast twitch. Every muscle group in your body has some distribution of both, with different ratios for each muscle. And some of the distribution is determined by genetics, but you can train one fiber type over the other, depending on how you train. That's the reason that you can train to run marathons or train to power lift 800 pounds, but usually not both. And some people have better genetic predisposition to developing one type of muscle fiber over the other, which is why a lot of people are naturally better at one or the other. But that means for different people, they have different predispositions to developing repetitive strain injuries than others. People always ask us, why do I have wrist pain? But this pro who plays longer and more than I do doesn't. And he doesn't exercise either. And he doesn't have pain. So the answer is biology plays favorites sometimes, unfortunately. So it typically takes six to eight weeks to build endurance, but a lot of people see results much quicker than that. Benji Fishy, for example, is one of the most accomplished Fortnite and Valorant players in the world. He was able to resolve his wrist pain symptoms after doing these exercises for just one week. Uh, hello, I am Benji Fishy, um, and I've recently gotten help from Matt uh, from 1HP uh, to help out my, I had some hand problems and I had some wrist problems. Um, and it's been, I'm not sure when the first one was, maybe it's been like a month or so now, or maybe a bit, no, probably around a month that I've been doing the exercises that he gave me after we had a consultation. Um, and my hands and my wrists are fully, uh, they feel like they're just back to normal completely. Um, I'm not having any pain in them anymore, um, like I was having before. Um, so yeah, no, a uh, big vouch for Matt uh proper nice guy really appreciate him uh and you know without him then maybe my career wouldn't be uh, as long as it as long as it is now as he's helped me out before in the past as well so you know i appreciate him a lot and yeah that is uh that is all but here's a graph of what this process typically looks like this is one of our coaching clients who i've de-identified here and as you can see here after following the program here for seven weeks this individual is back to gaming and almost at complete symptom resolution and this was a pretty involved case. Things like age and diet, nicotine, alcohol, all impact your muscle function and recovery. But the biggest thing that you can control is how much endurance exercise you are doing to keep your muscles and tendons healthy. So what else happens as tendons get irritated? Well, there's kind of a pathway that these tendons go down as they start to get more irritated, which is why catching this early is so important. And the longer it goes on for, the longer it can take to reverse. 
As these tendons get fatigued from the repetitive movements, they develop micro tears, which leads to inflammation, which you probably know more as tendonitis. We call this in the newer tendon research, reactive tendinopathy, which can be seen on ultrasound and MRI as the tendons are thickened and inflamed. This significantly increases the thickness of the tendons and can compress the nerves much more easily. So inflammation is an important part of the healing process because it's the body's way of repairing itself. But if it's there for too long, it can cause a thing called secondary cell death, where the tendon cell actually dies, which is why things move more into the degenerative tendinopathy stages. Even this can be healed with endurance exercises, though, that strengthen the healthy tendons around the damaged part. The real problem is if you let this degeneration work all the way through the tendon and it tears, but we have never seen that happen from things like gaming. But you do see this in athletes with things like Achilles tears from tendon damage mixed with high impact movements. The good news is that this is all reversible with exercises, and we have looked at all the most up-to-date research on this issue when we developed our programs and systems. Ebony Rio and Jill Cook have been doing great research on revolutionizing the way that we think about and treat tendon problems. The research shows that repetitive strain injuries are not just a mechanical problem, but a neurological problem that starts in the brain. The signal coming from the motor cortex in the brain, down the spinal cord, into the nerves, and eventually to the muscle isn't effectively activating the muscle fibers, which leads to uneven strain and ultimately tendon irritation. Their solution is to use an external auditory cue like a metronome to optimize the neurological signaling so the contractions of the muscles are more efficient. And we use these principles in all of our exercise programs. Unfortunately, it takes about 10 years for research to make it from the papers to the education system and into practice. And a lot of doctors, physical therapists, and occupational therapists, as well as hand therapists even, aren't using these protocols when prescribing exercises. One day this will all be standard practice, but we found out it works really well, so we ran with it and have implemented it into all of our programs. So we've spent a lot of time researching the best practices and we have field tested all of these systems with the best gamers in the world. And for these players, these programs have to work fast or they are at risk of getting benched. So people ask us all the time about bracing. Should I wear a brace? Does it help? Et cetera, et cetera. And our answer is braces are helpful at night to keep your muscles from getting tighter if they are already irritated. But during the day, while you're doing things with your hands, you really shouldn't use a brace. And when you use a brace, you stress shield your muscles and tendons, which makes them weaker. They atrophy and you have a hard time building that endurance properly. There's a fine line you want to walk when building endurance. Part of it is you want to reduce your activity levels and your load. So you aren't irritating the tendons more, but you also want to be building that endurance through exercises. And that is oftentimes a difficult balance to strike. But once you get a good feel for it, you can make progress very quickly. So what about stretching? We use stretching in all of our programs. It's really helpful for reducing the tightness in the muscles and tendons from overuse, but it only helps to temporarily open up a window to make the exercises more efficient. Same thing with massage or deep tissue or other soft tissue interventions like Theragun. And we have guides for how to best apply those types of interventions to yourself in our systems. But these all help open up a window to optimize your strengthening exercises. Muscles have an optimal length they want to be at to contract efficiently. If they are too short, they have a hard time contracting. If they are too long, they have a hard time contracting. But oftentimes with tendon irritation, one of those first symptoms is the reflexive tightening of the muscles to protect the area. So loosening those muscles up is super important, but it won't fix the underlying endurance deficit issue on its own. Another question we get a lot is how important is posture and ergonomics? And don't get me wrong, it's super important the way that you sit and the way that you hold your mouse and all that stuff does is increase the load on one side of the repetitive strain equation. Compared to the endurance of the muscles, it's a much smaller percentage of the equation. So it's worth thinking about, but if you are looking to do the least to move the needle the most, you should be looking into building the endurance of your tendons. So just to boil down everything I've been saying into this really simple concept, when the load you're putting on your tendons exceeds their endurance, you get inflammation and that turns into pain and tightness. The trick is to either reduce the load or increase endurance. Reducing the load means things like taking breaks, improving ergonomics, or wearing braces, but that's only a short-term solution. Increasing the endurance is the real fix. By training your tendons to handle more, you'll be able to type, work, or game without wearing out your muscles. And by the way, you don't need to buy tons of crazy equipment to do this either. We typically recommend some small dumbbells and cheap resistance bands, but as you can see here, people are doing these exercises with all kinds of creative things that have weight like this guy in our Discord doing the exercises with a wine bottle. You can use regular rubber bands. There are tons of options available without spending a ton of money on specialized equipment. For years, we only offered our online coaching programs where we would sit down with people on a video call, kind of talk to where they had pain, do different tests to determine which muscles were irritated, and then give them an exercise plan to address the endurance deficits that they had. And we still offer these calls, but we realized that 90% of the people we were seeing this way were getting the same exercises as everybody else and seeing the same improvements. And we realized that this process could be automated for most cases. We created this tool online that essentially runs you through the exact same evaluation process we do on these video calls. And for most people, this solves their problem in the exact same way. 
I've had people contact me for consultation calls and I've referred them to this tool and they completely resolve their issues without even needing to talk to anybody at a fraction of the price they pay if they were going to work with us for a month. There are still people that will need the online consultations or to talk to their doctor and we are never discouraging people from talking about these issues with their doctor in person. But we think it's worth giving this online tool a shot to get a plan within minutes that you can use to solve your problems without even leaving your house. And the way our broken healthcare system works, it may be months before you get to the right provider to fix this issue, and you may very well spend hundreds, if not thousands of dollars trying to solve this problem that could have been fixed much easier for cheaper. So we sent out a survey to people on our email list to figure out on average how much people were spending to solve this problem. And we found it was in the $500 to $1,000 range on average, with some people having spent multiple thousands of dollars on this problem. We knew we had to make a low cost solution that can quickly give people a plan to start working on this at home at the very least. And that's what this tool does. It gives you access to our systems and exercise programs at the cheapest possible cost. We know our solutions help people and we are just limited by what we can do here tech wise. So we are hoping as we grow, we can provide more specific solutions to people to help them and change more lives. We want to get people back to working or doing what they love. All right, let me walk you through this tool that we built and I'll show you how it works. Once you buy it on the website, you'll get a PDF with an access code and then you can take our online test. This test asks you questions about some of your medical complications if you have any. If you do get disqualified here, you can just email us and we'll give you a full refund on the tool. Um, and we'll give you your money back. Totally no questions asked. We aren't here to scam people or take their money for no reason. We just wanna make sure that it works. Also, if you use this tool for a month and don't think it's helping, we'll also refund you. Just wanna throw that out there. So you really have nothing to lose here and everything to gain. But like I said, once you make it past these questions, we'll ask you about numbness and tingling to rule in or out nerve symptoms and what pattern they're in. And this will change what exercises you get. We ask about mobility and take you through some endurance tests to determine where your deficits really are. And then after that, you'll get an exercise program that's customized and then emailed to you. You will have a bunch of information there about how to do the exercises, when to do the exercises, how many sets, reps, weight, based off of the answers to the test that you just went through. And then there's gonna be tracking sheets in there too, so you can monitor your progress so it's more scientific than just how do you feel in general. Then you can actually see if you're making objective progress uh, or not, and if you need to do more weight or less or whatever. And then you'll have unlimited access to this thing, so you can run it as many times as you need to get as many plans as you need forever. Whether you're just progressing your plan or using it for a different region, you can run it literally as many times as you need to to get the results that you want. This is the only product on the market like this, guys. Nobody else has anything like this. This is the quickest and easiest way to fix your issue, but it's not a quick fix. This still requires you to do the work yourself. Anyone telling you to just take a pill or a magic lotion, CBD or whatever, is just trying to make a quick buck off of you. You need to do the work to build the endurance of these tendons, and it is work. But we can give you a really comprehensive plan to get you there so you aren't wasting your time trying random stuff until something works. Most people don't spend more than 10 minutes a day doing these exercises. I've been working with Adriana Chechik after her crazy back injury at TwitchCon that made international headlines. But recently she was dealing with thumb pain from playing Mortal Kombat. And I gave her access to our troubleshooter and she cleared up her pain in just two weeks with five minutes of exercise a day. So this can work fast, but it depends on how quickly you intervene. When you've been in pain for a long time, the brain takes longer to rewire itself to not associate movement with pain. So everybody is different, but compared to spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to try to resolve this issue through our broken healthcare system, this really feels like a cheat code for a lot of people. We hear stories from so many people that have been dealing with this issue for one, two, even up to 12 years that have been able to solve their pain. It just takes longer for them. But these systems are giving people their lives back. Honestly, the price we have this thing set to is crazy low based on how efficiently it works. We could be charging so much more for this and maybe we are terrible businessmen for not, but we just want as many people as possible to have access to this information. We are reinvesting all the money we are making from this to keep building solutions so more people can benefit. We are a small operation, not some huge greedy medical corporation just trying to keep you on their healthcare treadmill forever. Also, like I was saying before about our Discord, we have a special channel where you get access to when you buy the troubleshooter, where you can directly ask us questions about anything related to your recovery. We have people in there asking questions about their posture, ergonomics, sets, reps, pain levels, whatever. And we give everyone on that channel an answer. It's crazy to me how we've been able to build such an amazing, robust community of people from all over the world, from different backgrounds, artists, musicians, programmers, cosmetologists, gamers, all kinds of people just trying to improve their lives and are all connected by this common thing. And the success stories are just so cool to me. We've genuinely been able to help so many people and give people hope that they can heal. And that's something that's so priceless to me. Thank you again so much for bearing with me here today. I am looking forward to seeing you make progress on this issue and getting back to whatever activity you do for work or for fun at 100%. It's a privilege and an honor to work through this with you and to share this with you today. Thank you so much for your time and I will talk to you soon.